So earlier this month, a Tubi original movie called Cinnamon was released. And on Facebook, I've seen a number of folks praising this movie as a cinematic masterpiece, and even going as far as to rate it a 10 out of 10. So naturally, I had to do my own investigation into the matter, being that I'm a Tubi connoisseur, of course. And according to my findings, the Tubi movie Cinnamon was trash. It was garbage. It was 100% freshly squeezed booty juice. And because this is bound to be an unpopular opinion, I will attempt to lay out a strong case for my opinion, which will be supported by specific examples from the movie. So without any further delay, sit back, buckle up, and prepare to agree or disagree with what I'm about to say. So first things first, I want to be fair and give credit to where credit's due. The Tubi movie Cinnamon wasn't the worst movie that I've ever seen. In fact, it had some decent aspects to it. For starters, Haley Kilgore as Jody Jackson, aka Cinnamon, had an amazing talent that was showcased in the movie. Her acting skills, along with her singing ability, was the highlight of the movie for me. I want to acknowledge the style of directing for the movie as well. As I watched the movie, it reminded me of something that Quentin Tarantino would do, to a lesser degree of course. I had a very good appreciation for the twists and turns that were incorporated into the plot. Some of them were pretty predictable, while some were completely unexpected, which I enjoyed. I also want to point out that the production quality for the movie Cinnamon seemed legit, and the overall acting performances were pretty decent. However, all the great things that I liked about Cinnamon were overshadowed by the aspects of the movie that I did not like. First, I gotta talk about the overall plot of the movie. At the heart of the movie, Cinnamon is a movie about a naive girl named Jody. She and her idiot crook of a boyfriend come up with the plan of robbing the place where Jody works, taking their newfound wealth of 30 plus thousand dollars and moving to one of the most expensive cities in America to live in order for Jody to pursue a career in music. Now I hate to be the overanalyzing movie critic, but this plan seems to make little to no sense to me. Jody has access to social media platforms like YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, and she could use these platforms to showcase her talents relatively for free. Yet she agrees to be an accessory to an armed robbery at her place of work? I mean, sure it's realistic, but these type of situations usually never end good for the masterminds behind the plan. Never mind the fact that Jody was never written to be a criminal, and never mind the fact that her boyfriend Eddie was never written to be a smart crook. Let's ask ourselves this question. Is 30 plus thousand dollars enough money to make a fresh start in Los Angeles? Especially if Jody wanted to be a singer and had no other plans of making an income? Eddie wanted to be her manager, despite having no experience managing anything. It really made no sense to me. And furthermore, what would the two of them plan to do if they actually made it to Cali and ran out of money? Would Eddie continue robbing people? Would the two of them try to get real jobs? Now I know I'm continuing to overanalyze the situation, but in short, their grand plan wasn't well thought out. So then a monkey wrench is thrown into Jody's plan to rob the place where she works at. And this is when she realizes that she robbed a crime family and Eddie killed one of the family members of the organization. Now you have Dumb and Dumber right here, trying to figure out how they're going to get out of this mess. And they finally meet their match with the cowboy crime family, but for a crew of armed seasoned gangsters with cowboy hats, they were also written to get dumber as the story went along, until they became dumber than Jody and Eddie. And that's a pet peeve that I have with watching these kind of movies. With the mistakes that Jody and Eddie were making, they should have been killed off a long time ago. But the cowboy crime family is pretty bad at making sure that people they're supposed to kill die or stay dead. My last pet peeve when it came to the story was how Eddie has some sort of unexplained superpowers. The guy gets shot in the chest with a shotgun and the blast knocks him out of a two-story window into a pile of trash. He somehow survives the encounter and crawls to a nearby car that happens to have the trunk of the car open and he climbs into the trunk without being noticed by the driver. And through the power of lazy storytelling, as well as sheer luck, Eddie is then able to locate Jody, get the drop on the crime family, and save the day, all while bleeding out from his injuries. Now this is complete foolishness to the highest degree, and up until this point, the movie Cinnamon was pretty much grounded in a realistic world. However, they bend the rules of physics and reality when certain characters need plot armor, and I really wasn't feeling it. But secondly, 
In my opinion, this movie had a character problem for movie critics like me. Usually in movies like this, there are people that you root for and people that you root against. Yet it was kind of hard for me to root for anybody in the movie. Jodie A.K. Cinnamon initially seemed like a character worth rooting for, but then she allowed some crook who gave her that good old pickle tickle after treating her to a gourmet lunch at Denny's to make her believe that the only way to achieve her dream was to turn to a life of crime. The character Wally, played by Damon Wayans, was the shady crook who used the gas station as a front for the crime family's operations. When his Christmas was canceled, I really didn't feel bad for him. Pam Greer as the character Mama was the most sympathetic character in the whole movie, and she barely had one sentence of dialogue during the entire movie. But Eddie was easily the most disliked character of the movie. He steals from people to make a living, even when he was shot in the chest with a shotgun out of a two-story window into a pile of trash and he crawled into a random person's car, he first begs the Good Samaritan for help. He begs the Good Samaritan to not call the police or EMS, but then he points a gun at the Good Samaritan and steals her car as well as her pizza without paying for it. Am I really supposed to root for a guy like that to save the day? And lastly, I wasn't a huge fan of the ending. I mean, Eddie saves the day and he's knocking on death's door as Jody drives them to LA and the movie ends with Jody singing her song to Eddie as they hold hands. But come on now. The premise of the whole movie was for Cinnamon to make it big as a singer. Yet the movie ends with Cinnamon in worse shape than she began in the movie. She's driving a stolen car to an unknown destination while fleeing a city where she was an accessory to a robbery and murder. Not to mention all the therapy that she would need for getting kidnapped and witnessing several people get murdered. In my opinion, Cinnamon is a bona fide horror movie that's disguised as a comedic thriller. But all in all, the icing on the cake for me was how the movie Cinnamon had pacing problems. There were several parts in the movie that were drastically slowed down, such as the character development between Eddie and Jody, as well as Cinnamon's studio session. But this marks the end of my rant, and I would like to know what you all think about it. Do you believe that the Tubi movie Cinnamon was a good movie, or do you think that it was bad? Feel free to leave all your comments below in the comment section, and I'll be sure to reply to everybody. And furthermore, with some of the shows that I'm reviewing coming to an end soon, I will be reviewing more Tubi content and posting more on popular opinion videos. So stay tuned and stay safe. Peace.